So, hello. Um, hello, good afternoon, everyone. So, this is Remembering the Cross with me, Gian Delorio, and okay. happy Saturday to us all and a pleasant afternoon. Um, so, today I will be covering for Pastor Norman Delorio, but we will still have our communion. So, um, Make sure to prepare your um, ele communion elements, your wine and your bread. Or if you don't have any wine, you can you can you can use juice or even water and some crackers for the bread. So make sure to welcome that uh, to prepare that for the element uh, for the communion later. So I will be sharing the word today. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, Auntie Eunice. Hello, Tita Carmen. <laughs> so, okay, so before we start, I would just uh, like to open in prayer. So let us pray first. Um, Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity that you have given us to um, just meet other people through this platform. We thank you, Father, for this uh the media that we can use today to just share your goodness and to just um, meditate Father on uh, the good things that you have done for us this past few days. And I thank you, Father, that as also I will share today, I thank you, Father, for your guidance. Um, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that will guide me to the right words. Thank you, Father, that um, you will also speak through me um, the people who are listening to this live and I thank you father that this is going to be a um a time of revelation and just reminders father of how good you are and how you're always there for us thank you lord in jesus name amen okay so hello everyone so today i am i am gn again and i'm going to cover for pastor norman today and I just want to say hello to all the youth out there. And when I say youth, it's not only the youth who are of the same age as me, but to everyone. Because in the kingdom of God, we are ageless. We're all youth. So congratulations to us all. <laughs> so today, I'm, uh, last week, I talked about why we celebrate communion. And that is because of the victory that um the death of jesus christ brought when uh the victory that jesus christ brought when he died on the cross and today i'm going to start with why did jesus die on the cross for us so why you ever wonder sometime um like what is this why jesus why did jesus die for us you know you sometimes we have those thoughts and uh, the answer to that is you can find it in First John, First John chapter four in verses nine to ten, and I'm reading it from the Passion, the Passion translation (TPT), and it says, "The light of God's love shined within us when He sent His ma matchless Son into the world, so that we might live through Him. This is love. He loved us long before we loved Him. It was His love." not ours. He proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. So the answer is there. The answer is because he loved us, because God loved us so much that he sent his son down here on earth to die on the cross for us. It isn't, it isn't because of what we, what we did or anything. It's because it's solely because of God's love for us. He loved us. That's why he wanted to, um, he wanted to save us from, you know, the darkness that is covering us before. We were saved from our sins because we matter. Okay. We are too important to be living a life of darkness and despair in this world where, you know, it's Satan's domain. So Satan can do anything to us and God doesn't want us to live live that kind of life, the kind of life where 
you know, Satan is the one who is, um, who is dominating it. So we are VIPs, kumbaga. We are very important persons because we have a purpose in this world and we are part of God's great plan. We are part of a bigger plan and that's why God sent we are part of a bigger plan, and God loved us. That that is why Jesus died on, on the cross. And why did Jesus die? Um, there, today is Black Saturday, and in tradition, it is um the time when Jesus is now in the tomb, right? And he's going to rise again after three days. And um, some people, uh, we may think that while he was dead, he wasn't doing anything. He was just lying there. When in fact god was working even though even though he was there in the tomb, he was working because um hebrews 2 14 says therefore since the children share in flesh and blood this is hebrews 2 14 he himself likewise also partook of the same that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death that is the devil so through death Jesus conquered death itself, and that is the devil. And when you think about it that way, it's like conquering him. And just like what um, I mentioned last time, or even what Pastor Norman mentioned last time, when Jesus conquered death, he conquered our sins, and we are no longer sinners. No, we are no longer sin sinners, and we are a new creation. And in, that was the result of Jesus' death on the cross. Now, I mentioned a while ago that we are part of a bigger plan. And as a youth, when I first heard of this, um, I thought that since I'm a part of God's plan, I must do this and do that, you know, be good to other people and, you know, not lie every time. I mean, I'm not saying that um, we should do the opposite of it, but you know, did you ever think that way, that you should do a lot of things because you're you're in this you're part of this great plan so i need to keep busy doing this and that and so i get distracted by a lot of things i worry about whether i'm doing things right or not or if i'm actually getting things done you know so that i can participate well in this great plan i get distracted by a lot of things about my actions but actually that's not the point um i've learned this in church but i also you, the revelation was um, revealed to me when I was having my own personal devotion and I was um, reading Luke 10. And in Luke 10, there is a story about two sisters. They are Mary and Martha in verses 38 to 42. And the scenario was Martha, uh, Martha and Mary had a close relationship with Jesus and Martha invited Jesus over to her house. And while she was busy, busy being a host, preparing the food and whatnot, her sister Mary only stayed with Jesus, Jesus, listening to him talk. And you know how sometimes if you're the only one who's doing all the work, you get annoyed to that other person who's not doing anything. So Martha was annoyed So by Mary. So she asked Jesus to tell Mary to help her because it wasn't fair. But Jesus said, starting in verse 1, uh, verse 41, this is Luke 10, verse 41, and I'm reading from the NLP. Um, but the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. So what did Jesus say? Um, Jesus said that we are worried about a lot of things, but in fact, there is only one thing that we should concern we should be concerned about and what is that one thing my interpretation about this is that you know rather than worrying about worldly things about how you would do well in this or how you would do well in that one thing we should only be concerned about is jesus jesus who he is his character and what he says in in his word the bible so because the credit of our salvation is in ours to have we didn't have to work for us to be saved. We didn't have to do anything for us to be saved because God simply loved us and he sent Jesus' son uh, and he sent his son down on earth to die for us. 
to be the sacrifice. It is because of God's love that we are saved. And all we must do is drop everything and listen to God, to his word. And that was what Mary did while Martha was over there being busy about preparing dinner, preparing, you know, they're all good things. But she was she was distracted all by all those little things. And you know, she, she forgot about Jesus who was just, you know, there beside her. So um, while Mary was she was she was ready to drop everything and just you know go to God and just listen uh, go to Jesus and just listen to what he has to say so that's that's the only thing we need to do okay in proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 i'm reading from the tpp the passion translation it says trust in the lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you, and he will lead you in every decision you make. Become intimate with him in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you go. That That is what we need to do. We don't have to worry about um, whether I'm doing this mission right, or I, or, or we don't have to worry about what we need to do next or something. We just... What we need to do is just, you know, go to God's word and ask for his instruction. Ask, just trust in him completely because our opinions may be, you know, tainted by what we learned and experienced from the world. So all that we could trust on, uh, all that we could trust is the word of God. And this is all by faith, okay? Faith in Hebrews 11.1 1 is defined as the evidence of things we cannot see so it is believing without seeing because the but we can't really see god so sometimes for other people it's hard for them to believe right it's hard for them to believe something they cannot see because we are you know in this world we are stuck in this belief that um to see is to believe right um we are used to um I'll only believe this thing if I see it, right? But faith is believing without seeing. And because we have seen, and, but even though, you know, we haven't, we didn't really see God face to face, we have seen how he moved through other people's lives. We have also seen how he moved through the people in the Bible. We have the Bible, we have the evidence. And because we have felt healing through his words and that's why we believe him. I personally, um, um, I felt a lot of reassurance and, you know, my a lot of my confusion were lost when I read the Bible. And that is the evidence. So I believe him because he is real. I felt him. So we don't have to do anything to earn the love of God. But without faith, we cannot please him. Hebrews 11 uh, it is said in Hebrews eleven six that it is impossible to please God without faith because it's like it's like you're praying about something, but your heart is not really into it because you have doubts. So because it works like this, God doesn't work without our instruction because He won't force something on us. He won't He won't like tell you that oh. Gian, you need to do this or do that. He won't force anything to you. He is, he is gentle. He will just wait for us to decide whether we want him to work in our lives or not. Okay, so um, if we pray that God heal me and you believe it with all your heart, without doubt, then God, then God, then God will work. It works that way. So if you doubt what you're believing, Making it come to pass won't be easy. It it's also just like when you have this authority. I I said before that um, along with our new identity, we we already have this authority um to conquer devil. But if you doubt yourself, it isn't like that authority isn't going to be manifested. It won't manifest because you doubt yourself. It's just like when you're doing a routine or when you for for us in school if i believe that i won't do well in the test even though i studied a lot the it 
the results are really like that. I, I didn't do well in the test because I didn't believe in myself. So it's like that. If you, you don't have faith um, to ourselves, you know, if the results are negative, usually. So in this world, you know, there are really times when you doubt. I, I had my doubts too because, um, you know, there are a lot of things happening in this world. Those And the devil is really trying hard to, you know, to make your relationship with Jesus rocky. But we have to be stronger than them because that is, as I mentioned, that is the devil wanting to ruin a relationship with God. So we got to be stronger um, than our doubts, than our unbelief. And um, as, as a youth who is, you know, sometimes I always hear this in church. Um, we, we really need to have faith. And our faith should be stronger than our, our doubts. And I wondered before, how do I do this? How do I, how do I um, strengthen my faith? And I got the answer. How do we nurture our faith? It is by whole, always hearing the word of God. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we nurture our faith by always meditating on his word. Bible by meditating his word day and night, you know, as in what was that psalm? Uh, a psalm says, um, blessed is the man who meditates in the word of God day and night. So really, just like if you study in an exam, right? You study um, for an exam for days and days and what you study just, you know, sticks in your mind. It's like that. So if you read the word of God, if you meditate on it, and not just read it, but understand it, and, you know, put those words into your heart and mind and apply it in your life, it's it's how you strengthen your faith. And um, there is really a process, you know, it, it's not, it doesn't come to you immediately. So you have to do the effort to um nurture your faith because no one can do it for you your faith is yours alone your parents can do it for you because before i thought that since my parents are you know they have this strong faith in jesus christ then i i don't have to do anything anymore because it's like they're my parents so they're responsible of me but no it's not like that i learned my faith is mine alone and um Nurturing it is also my choice. And we should always choose the choice that is, you know, for for our growth in terms of our spiritual growth also. And yeah, so we need to be a good foundation for God's word. And that is by clinging to what he says and not what the world says. Another thing is that we shouldn't be, um, you know, too hung up on the thing in this world because we are we are in this world but we are not of this world i said before that we are now a new creation and that our citizenship is in the kingdom of god even though we live we live in this world we are citizens of heaven and we don't work we don't work by i don't know we don't work by the world's like when the world says that you can't do this and you can't do that and you are too weak and you are not important because because the devil will say that you are not you are not strong enough to do this and that you are not capable no that is not our identity our identity is in the kingdom of god and in the kingdom of god we are powerful and we are more than conquerors and we are um stronger than the devil we have more authority over them so I myself have just, you know, come to apply all these recently. I haven't been doing it for too long, but I've already witnessed how God speaks through the Bible. I mean, how he gently corrects me in his word, you know, when sometimes um, I have this, if you think sometimes and you're confused, you know, he how he reassures me. And how he makes things clear to me whenever I am confused about something. I some, 
um, I'm in the process of making it a habit to always consult him about everything, you know. When I get confused about something or when I have questions, I just go and read the Bible and meditate. And that is what my parents also tell me that sometimes even when I need to go somewhere, you know, you, you need to consult the Word of God because He he alone knows what's good for you. So, um, my sometimes my parents will tell me, like, I have a decision and I'm not really sure what to do about it. And I consult my parents about it. And they will say, let's read the Word of God and let's see what He says. And, you know, it's amazing how um, God just answers you in His own little ways. He speaks to your mind. And I know that when you do it, He... he he will also speak to you because God is like that, you know. The Bible, it's a rem- reminder that God is always there for us, that His word never fades and it never fails, and that He's always ready to listen and talk to us. You know, the Bible is everywhere. It's in our it's in the it's on the internet, it's in our phones, it's also we also have the physical Bible. So, you know, whenever we, um, we need guidance, we can just go to Him. And that is how we nurture our faith. And that is how we block everything that the world wants to put in our minds, which are all negativity and, and everything and those things. So all we need to do is meditate on His Word and pray. We We shouldn't be worried about things that are not important. We should only focus on Him, His Word. And commit everything to Him in our prayers, our plans, our decisions, even our questions. And just give thanks and praise Him. And then we leave the rest to Him. We leave the rest to Him, to the Holy Spirit who is going to work. And, you know, um, work and um, manifest things that we have prayed for. It's important that... Um, we really stay strong on God's word and never, never give in to what the world says, especially for the youth. If they're, uh, for the all the young people, I know that, um, even I sometimes get, um, distracted by a lot of things, especially when I spend my time doing social media. So, um, it's really important that we cleanse our minds and just stay strong to the word. And when you see something, you just, uh, okay, you just treat it as a lesson and that you should pray for those kind of things that other people will learn as well. Yeah. So that is all. And I just wanted to remind that this, um, what do you call that? Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that, yeah, we are a new creation now and Jesus died only once. So we are, and on that time, we are already forgiven, um, forgiven from all our sins. We don't have to, you know, um, you don't have to feel unworthy because you are worthy. You matter and you're important. And now we are um let me call on pastor norman deloria to um do the communion with me thank you again i trust that you have been blessed by the word of god one thing I learned today, listening from Gian, is that um, there are things that seemingly are important to us that are distracting us because uh, we operate in the natural realm. We operate on the things that we think are good. Yes, doing something, uh, the chores that we are supposed to do every day, sometimes it distracts us and so there, there is more important thing and that is listening to the lord now why do we need to listen to the to the to the lord because according to proverbs which is quoted later or before said trust in the lord with all your heart 
So there are things that we do, and yet without consulting the Lord, without going back to the Word of God, then we might be we might be doing things that are already away from Him. Now I like uh, what uh, Gian said that uh, when she makes decision, when she is asking for uh, for uh, a permission from us. And we always say, uh, what is God telling you through the word of God? Give us a word that will uh, convince us that God is saying yes or no. So I noticed that there are times that she has to say, okay, um, according to the word of God, it says no. And of course, many times the word of God will just say, yes, pa, I can go. We can go. And so we permit her because we believe God is also speaking to her in a very, very special way. So parents, I believe even young people can hear from the Word of God. The training people, young people, to hear the Word of God is one of the most important things that we can do as a parent. So it is important that we, we read God's Word as a family. We always ask them, um, as we read God's Word, what is that thing that track you what is that particular word that God is telling you something and then we share. That is where we train our young people to listen to God and to hear what God is saying to them. So I believe the word of God is very relevant in our life today. It's so with our children's life. So training our children, our young people, even when they are a child, training them read God's word, meditate on God's word, apply God's word in a life is one of the most important thing that we can do, imparting the truth to our children. And the truth will set them free. Amen? Amen, yes. Thank God. Now, I like also what she said a while ago, that many times today is a Black Saturday. Many people believe that God is dead, you know, God is dead, do not go out, God is dead, you know, no one will watch you. But that is not actually what the Bible is saying, because uh, every day, every day God is active. In fact, he is just listening to us, waiting for our prayers. We have learned that for several uh, meetings, that the moment we pray to God, God listens to us. He has given us keys, and the moment the keys we are, you are, we, are using, you are, we are using the keys that he has given to us. He is bound. God is bound to his promises. Remember, we learned yesterday that God's promises are all yes. And then the moment we say amen, then that makes it, uh, that makes it rolling. That makes it possible. The moment one will agree, the moment we agree with the yes promises of God, then that particular promise is made a reality in our life. Wow. So what a blessed time to take communion. What a blessed time to know that Jesus Christ, according to the uh, passage in Revelation chapter 1, let me call this, Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. This is what Jesus did on that Saturday where people think that he was dead, nothing happening. This is what he said. I am the living one. I died. But look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. Can you imagine that? When Jesus Christ seemingly is dead, but according to the word of God, he was there at the grave, and he conquered, he took the keys of death and grave in the hands of the enemy. This is the time that he was victorious. Can you imagine that? So now, we don't need to worry about death. We don't need to worry about grave or dying because Jesus Christ conquered death for you and me. Can we say that? Jesus Christ conquered death and grave for me. Can we say that again? Jesus Christ conquered death and grave for me. Wow, this is one of the most important uh, thing that we can do today as we remember the Lord Jesus Christ. As we have said, all our broadcast is always pointed to the cross of Jesus Christ. That is why we take communion, because we remember what he has done. Today, are you ready with the elements? You can take your bread right now. Be prepared. Are you ready now? 
I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Please uh, raise your uh, bread. As you remember, this is what Jesus Christ did yesterday, a good Friday. He, his body was broken for us. He was humiliated. He was, uh, he was uh, practically, uh, practically humiliated for us. He gave his life as a ransom for us. He was wounded for our transgression. But there is a good news for that. He was wounded for our transgression. He was whipped so that we may be healed. Wow. Wow. Thank God. Thank God. We are also healed because of that, uh, what happened in the cross. So right now, if there is anything that you feel that you are not feeling so well physically, emotionally, spiritually, in your business, there's something that you need God to touch. Let's take that and trust the lord as we take communion you are saying lord i believe i believe you set freedom from any bondage in my life i believe you are giving me shalom peace wholeness in my life so i pray as we take this god's power will be manifested in your life giving you healing right now can you take that okay that's that's the read for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your broken body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for the freedom. Thank you for my healing. Verse 25, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's partake of the cup together. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. You have completed what you intended to give for us. When you died on the cross and said, Tetelestai, it is finished. We receive what you have given for us. Healing forgiveness restoration and even lord we have a new identity we are now a child of god and we have a great uh plan you have a great plan for us so we say so be it lord have your way we are giving our life to you we say you are our lord have your way thank you so much thank you for loving us this we ask in jesus name amen and amen Okay, thank you very much and see you on Monday. God bless. And tomorrow there is a service. Uh, you can just tune in to Word for All Nations at 10 o'clock. If, if you have no other churches to follow, then you tune in with us at 10 o'clock. Of course, we encourage you to uh, encourage others to have time, spend time with the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. We love you all. God bless you God bless. all.